ओके मैम सो थैंक यू मैम एज द प्रायर रिक्वेस्ट वी हैव गोर द परमिशन फ्रॉम आवर सेक्रेटरी सर सो द वेबिनार इंटेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट कॉन्सेप्ट एंड नीड इज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इन द एसोसिएशन विद कॉमर्स डिपार्टमेंट विद आई पी आर सेल द इन्वेंशन एंड द आइडिया can be transform the generation forever all innovations are begin with simple idea or thoughts the single idea can be built up and developed fully functional invention the invention make human being easy life and so today there we are assembled together to learn importance and intellectual property rights so this webinar will cover the different aspects of intellectual property rights so today we have the great personality dr ashwini kumar bhalla ji professor and dean academic affairs post graduate department of commerce and business innovations research scd government college ludhiana sir has published many a uh, research paper in reputed journals and presented many papers in national and international conferences sir has uh, published uh, around 10 books uh, with reputed uh, publishers so now uh, i welcome to uh, dr ashwini kumar bhalla ji and sir i request you kindly start your session and give your fruitful knowledge to our audience thank you uh, ram ji first of all i uh, i'm very humble and uh, very happy that uh, bln college has given me this opportunity to interact with the different colleagues uh, i could see many people from himachal many people from other states and the students of uh, this region uh, dr tarnpreet ji you have chosen a very rightly subject uh, today to interact with the student because this is the need of the hour presently we are facing cut throat competition and uh, we are living in a global market and everywhere uh, people want that they should be given high quality goods and services and even research and development in the field of uh, medical science is the need of the hour when we are in this pandemic situation so the idea the knowledge and its commercial use is very important asset for all wide box of life maybe in the field of business maybe in the field of services maybe in the field of education maybe in the field of health or medicine etc so importance of intellectual property as a strategy to cure the various bottlenecks which comes in the life of the human being is very important and even in the business itself ip is taken as a business strategy to grow the business so that's why it is very important we can say that uh, intellectual property is the life blood of every organization and even uh, our university grants mission national assessment and accreditation council national uh, institutional ranking framework they have given due importance in the field of higher education to judge the quality of uh, different institutions for ranking purpose that how different institutions are uh, focusing on research and development and developing intellectual property rights it is not there that uh, our educational institutions basic purpose is to just transmit the knowledge our purpose is also to create the knowledge if dissemination of the knowledge is the only purpose of our educational institutions then the purpose of curing the life of flourishing the life of and easing the life of the human being will not be possible so universities and colleges even along with the 
purpose of knowledge dissemination they should also focus on the creation of knowledge so when we talk about the creation of knowledge so definitely it is the very important part that you have to develop the creation of the human minds in the form of a knowledge which is also one form of the intellectual property so managements of the different institution may be in any field they have to focus on the intellectual property also and it is uh, the earnest desire of the time that they should have a proper management cell to manage the intellectual property of the organization i have seen so many organizations where they are working for the development of many new things their creative minds are developing yeah. new kinds of uh, products and services their creative minds are uh, creating so many databases their creative minds are developing so many designs but because of the failure to management such manage such kind of property sometime they could not get the advantage of this property so mostly many of the organization thought that uh, if they focus on managing the physical properties or the human resources only they will be able to get the success but as far as the intellectual property is concerned this is one of the very important property which along with the other physical form of property should also be managed properly and their advantages should be reaped in the future so first and foremost question for every organization is to know what intellectual property you have got over the years you develop so many culture you many so many designs so many practices they need to be documented but when we fail to get the documented when we don't know what kind of intellectual properties we we have then we cannot reap the profits out of that secondly we should know where intellectual properties there in our organization where we can focus and develop it thirdly we have to prioritize our intellectual property we have to label our intellectual property we have to secure the intellectual property you may have seen, you have heard about it many producers of some kind of products they don't share the formula it means they are very very over protective regarding the formula of their products so we have to work toward the securing of the intellectual property also and even educate our employees and our pe other people who are working for the organization so that we can educate them regarding the intellectual property practices so we also must know that we have to know what what are the various tools of the intellectual property with which you can secure them and we have to think globally so intellectual property over the year has got very importance very good importance in the arena of different organizations because if you have to work for the easing the life of the human being on this earth we must focus on the research and development we must focus on developing the new kind of products and services which can cut our cost and uh, even uh, uh, uh we can uh, get the benefit of providing the good quality goods and services to them maybe in the field of health maybe in the field of education maybe in the field of uh, uh rural services maybe in the field of uh, business or maybe in the field of providing the services to the human being so we have to focus on all these aspects so Uh, i have been given a task by honorable principal dr karan peer ji to talk about the basics of uh, intellectual property its various kind of kinds how these are developed how these can be protected and how these are relevant in the higher education so i have structured my presentation in two segments one segment will be talking about the basics of the intellectual property then need of the intellectual property and the second part in the second part we will be discussing about how intellectual property rights can be beneficial for our educational institutions and what efforts we should made in our educational institution to develop these kind of intellectual property rights or how can we protect them and how can we gain in in terms of the uh, institutional ranking in terms of nac 
or in terms of national institutional ranking framework. So all this uh, I will be discussing with you. So I have structured a presentation for this purpose. So I will be discussing and going uh, towards that. Now I'll be sharing my presentation with you. So if it is visible, kindly let me know anyone. Uh, is, it, is, is my presentation uh, visible to all of you? It's visible. Yes, okay, it is visible. So, uh, my basic purpose will be just talking first uh, two things I will be discussing with you. Number one, uh, uh, I'll be discussing with you that how intellectual property rights are developed and uh, what kind of intellectual properties are there, basic concepts and then needs and then I'll be discussing with you its uh, relevance in the higher education. So as far as uh, properties are concerned, basically we consider two kinds of uh, properties. One is tangible properties and another kind of property is intangible property. Regarding tangible property, we are all aware about. For example, it can be movable property, it can be immovable property. And in movable property, we have like car, like aeroplane, like any other thing which can be moved from one place to another place. Second kind of tangible property is immovable property. That means physical things which cannot be moved from one place to another place that is like building, like land, etc. Second category of uh, in, uh, property is intangible property, which is also known as uh, intellectual property. For example, it may be related with the industrial property, it may be related with the copyrights property, or uh, it may be uh, related with the patents, it may be related with the design, trademarks, uh, or any other kind of geographical indication. We'll be talking them uh, one by one in future. So there are different kinds of property. So as tangible properties are important for any kind of organization, intangible properties are also very important for every organization. So that's why, uh, that's why it is very important that we must uh, uh, consider all these kinds of properties in business also and focus on managing of these kind of properties also. So unless and until we are aware about how these properties are created, how these properties are protected, I think we cannot gain the benefit out of it. Secondly, now let's uh, discuss uh, how, what is intellectual property. Basically, intellectual property is a creation of the human mind. So intellectual property is that property which arises from the human intellect. That may be you may have written some novel, you may have written some book, you may have uh, designed the prototype of uh, some kind of machine, you may have designed some kind of circuits. So you may have designed some kind of uh, formula, scientific formula from which you can develop a project. So basically, when we talk about intellectual property, intellectual property is that property which is a creation of the human mind, which is a creation of the human intellect. If human being has some kind of potential, he analyzes certain things and out of his research, and out of his intellect, whatever he developed in the form of any kind of thing, which may be a book, which may be a cinematography, which may be a film, which may be a novel, which may be a story, which may be a design, which may be a, some kind of product with which, uh, which can be used for human consumption that is called intellectual property. So intellectual property is the creation of the human intellectual process. And it is therefore the product of human intellect or mind. So when human intellect and mind is applied to develop something and <coughs> with some kind of creativity, we are in a position to develop something that is uh, may, may not be in the physical, that is not in the physical format, but you can reap the benefits out of that, that can be used as a property that is called intellectual property. So basically, it is the creation of the human mind. So like uh, as far as intellectual property is concerned, it is an intangible form of property. When I say that it is an intangible form of property, it means you can't touch it, you can't see it, but you can reap the benefit of it because with the kind of formula, with the kind of creative things, which, which may be in the written form, in the form of words, in the form of symbols, in the form of trademarks, in the form of some design, 
you can reap the profits or reap the benefits of profit secondly it is a personal property why it is a personal property because it is the creation of a particular human being and that person owes this property and he has the only right to use it or give the right to others for further use so basically it is also fulfilling all features of the basic form of property that's why it is also called intellectual property and next it is based on some kind of creation it is based on some kind of intellect it is based on some kind of creativity so as far as the objectives of the objects of the intellectual property is concerned basically the objects of uh, uh, the rights of uh, covered by the concept of intellectual properties are manifestations of the human creativity so whatever human being create out of his intellect out of his uh, capabilities of the human brain that may be in the form of work that may be an invention that may be a relationship between symbols and various kind of basic objects that is also called that is the purpose that we must protect the rights uh, covered by it but when we talk about the rights covered by it it means we have to protect the basic right of the inventors otherwise if you don't protect the basic rights of the inventor or basic rights of the writer basic right of the originator of this uh, intellectual property he will not be encouraged so to encourage them so because the this kind of property covers all kind of rights which are available in kind of other properties so therefore it is very much necessary that we should uh, design a particular kind of law particular kind of system that the rights are protected uh, for the human being so as far as intellectual properties are concerned if we briefly discuss all of that basically we can divide them many parts first intellectual property may be in the form of patents patents mean you have uh, discovered one kind of uh, some design you have developed some kind of machinery you have developed some kind of movable vehicle system or creating some kind of uh, thing which you have developed which can be protected so uh, for example you have developed you may have developed some kind of formula which can be used for developing some kind of medicine so you can get protected under the patents so this is a process of registering this uh, uh, invention with some kind of machinery which is out developed out of the law and then protect your rights similarly if you have written some kind of poems some kind of uh, novel some kind of stories or some kind of books then the copyright in the form of copyright uh, the intellectual property is there similarly you if you have developed some kind of uh, symbols or combination of words and symbols with you which your product or service can be identified then you can define it as a trademark so because uh, with this kind of uh, sim uh, combination of symbols and uh, Uh, signs and words your product is identified and the uh, people know that this represent a quality of uh, certain kind of products this can be developed as a trademark then you may have certain kind of industrial design if you have developed some kind of industrial design which may be used for producing the goods and services then it is uh, registered under industrial design so intellectual properties may be fragmented into patents it to copyrights into geographical indication geographical indication means some kind of products are there which has lineage for a particular kind of territory for example basmati rice indian basmati rice are having special kind of and that is available for example in punjab in haryana or in uttar pradesh similarly you have a kashmiri kesar kashmiri apple similarly you have agra ka petha these are the things which are indicated with some kind of geographical region and they represent the quality of that region that's why these are registered under the uh, geographical indication so basically intellectual property uh, rights are exclusive rights given to a person over the creation of their mind for certain period of time and secondly this right is given under the protection of the law this is a legal right and thirdly it is a intangible potential asset when you use this formula 
when you use this uh, copyright you reap uh, certain benefits and uh, it is a personal asset therefore it is a monopoly a person who has created it he has the monopoly to use it or he has he or she has the monopoly to give the rights to other to use it so <clears throat> these are the certain things uh, and uh, this is a negative right negative mean it it uh, uh, restrict the other people to use it without your permission so these are the certain features of intellectual property rights and kinds of uh, intellectual property rights it may be in the form of patents it may be form in the form of copyrights it may be in the form of geographical indication industrial design and trademarks so as far as uh, intellectual property protected intellectual properties are concerned so it may be invention by a patent or by a trade secret so you may protect your formula as a trade secret or as a register as a patent patent and secondly it is a utility model by a certificate or secret so when it is registered in your name may be copyright may be patent then it is a given a certificate that only you have the exclusive right to you to use it or give the exclusive right to use to others so it may be industrial design by certificate it may be a service mark certificate it may be a copyright by reducing to the fixed form so protect uh, various kinds of protection are given under various laws which we'll be discussing later part of uh, this lecture so <clears throat> intellectual property is uh, uh, protected under the various laws and uh, various provisions are available the registration process is there uh, with by following which you can protect your intellectual property right so that only you can use it or either on your permission these rights can be utilized by any other person so intellectual property rights are uh, essentially recognized and accepted all over the world due to very important reason number one to provide an incentive to individual for new creation as i have already told you if you don't have any kind of uh, protection system of intellectual property rights then nobody will be encourage to uh, create new creations if i am going to produce a film which may be uh, uh, stolen by other people and uh, it may be pirated immediately then nobody will go to the cinema hall and see the pictures if i have written a book i have the exclusive right to publish it if somebody else copied copy date get it photocopied and circulate to other person nobody will buy the new book so it means it is my right if i have done something new some creative things then it is my right to utilize it so that i have used my creative mind and then use the intellect so that i can get the benefits in the future so it is the protection provided to incentivize the individual for new creation secondly to accord due recognition to the creators and inventors if there is no such kind of protectionism then there will be no recognition of the creators and inventors today i will write a book somebody will write in my uh, deleting my name in his own name in his or her name so it means uh, uh, my recognition will be lost so the law which is provided the machinery which is provided under the different laws of the intellectual property they try to protect the uh, recognition of the creators and inventors and to ensure material reward for the intellectual property and uh, lastly to make available good products and services to the others so that uh, when you protect it everybody will be encouraged to new kind developing new kind of uh, products and services so in this way the protection of the intellectual property give rise to incentivize the various benefits which are available for the new creation so it gives recognition to the new creators and inventors and it ensure that a whosoever has developed intellectual property they should be given material rewards for that so they should not be ignored so i have already told you that various kinds of intellectual properties are there patents in the form of patents you can register your inventions it may be product patent it may be process patent it may be a material patent it may be a composition of various thing which can be patented or uh, there may be certain kind of formula which provide technical solution to the technical problems that is also covered under the patents similarly if you have developed a certain kind of industrial design 
uh, which appeals to the eye, external features of the product you develop, which appeals to the eye, which is maybe in the form of new shape, which may be in the form of new kind of pattern, or which may be in the form of new kind of configuration that may be uh, registered as an industrial design. Similarly, uh, in the form of a trademark, you may have intellectual property. As I have already told you, that as far as trademark is concerned, it is a visual symbol such as a word, which may be in the form, uh, which may be in the form of name, logo, label, monogram, and uh, slogan, etc. So it is applied to the various articles to recognize the quality of the product. So similarly, in the form of intellectual property, maybe in the form of copyrights. When we talk about the copyrights, it may be artistic work. If you have developed some kind of uh, uh, painting that is covered under copyright, if you have written some novel, some poem, some story that is a literary work that is covered under intellectual property. Similarly, if you have some musical compositions, if you have uh, sing certain song, recorded it, that is your copyright. Similarly, if you have created dramatic creations, that is also covered under copyright. Similarly, proprietary rights comes into existence as soon as the work is created. So immediately when you create this work, this right comes into existence. It's not necessary that uh, you have to register it under the copyright, but it is beneficial to get it registered. Otherwise, it will be sometime uh, difficult to prove it that you have written this or you have composed this musical composition or uh, you have produced this kind of painting. Similarly, it may be in the geographical indication which identifies may many kinds of the products, maybe agricultural, maybe natural or manufactured goods originating from definite territory in India. For example, Kashmir has certain kinds of products which has some famous Agra has some products. Similarly, Assam tea has some kind of Darjeeling is very famous for these kind of products. So processing of the special kind of ingredients based on the unique features of particular area that is uh, also very important that we define them as a geographical indication. That means these products and services are indicated geographically region wise or some uh, climate wise so that we can identify these products like Kashmiri shawls, like uh, Nagpur orange, like Assam tea, like Darjeeling tea, like uh, Kashmiri apple, like apple of Himachal Pradesh. These kind of things are covered under the geographical indications. Now in India, if we look at the protection of the intellectual property rights are concerned, various laws has been promulgated by the government of India, which uh, provide various kinds of provisions for protecting the intellectual property of uh, different people. So first we talk about the patent. As far as patent is concerned, in Indian uh, laws, Patent Act 1970, which is amended uh, in 2005, that is applicable. And uh, if you have got uh, some kind of uh, invention, you may get it patented under the Patent Act. You have to follow a particular kind of process and the process is similar in almost all kinds of intellectual properties. First, you have to apply it, then uh, they give a public notice, then it is, uh, if some uh, objections are there, then you may be asked certain queries, you reply to that. After that, when the patent authority or the IPR authority is satisfied that you have uh, no objection to the public and uh, you have a unique kind of uh, thing which you have developed, which cover all the provisions of the act and automatically they will give you the, after following the due procedure, the patent right and certificate of patent. And basically maximum protection under the patent act is provided for 20 years. And, but it is very much important that every year you have to get it renewed. If you don't renew it, then automatically your patent certificate will be cancelled. Then we have a trademark, which is a lifelong, but you have to get it renewed for after 10 years. Trademark Act 1999 is there, which is amended in 2010. Then you have Design Act 2000, which protect the intellectual property related to the design, industrial design, which has a maximum protection of 15 years after 10 years, uh, or uh, after 10 years for next five years, you have to get it uh, uh, get it patented. After that, again, you have to refresh. Uh, the, similarly, the copyrights, which is available for the 60 years, it's a renewal is not required. So Copyright Act 1957 is there, which deals with, the, which was amended in 2012 also. 
Similarly, geographical indication for that purpose, we have geographical indications of goods registration and protection at 1999, which provides you the lifelong protection. And but after 10 years, you have to renew it. You renew your certificate so that uh, uh, some kind of if changes are there that can be reported. So these are the various laws which are available under the intellectual property regime of the India, which protect the intellectual property rights of different persons. Let us understand this uh, uh, th this thing from uh, uh, this Coca-Cola bottle. So as far as the logo Coca-Cola uh, is concerned, it is covered under trademark. If you see this bottle, then uh, here Coca-Cola is written in certain kind of a particular fashion, particular uh, design is used here. This logo Coca-Cola is an example of the trademark. Now this bottle has one kind of shape that is called industrial design. So the shape of uh, the bottle, which is particular design that is covered under industrial design. Now what is patent? Patent may have been obtained in respect of bottling equipment. So the equipment plant, which is designed to create this kind of bottle, uh, bottle that may be uh, protected under the patent act. Similarly, the formula which is used for producing the coke uh, under it that may, that may be, have been patented under copyright. So, uh, sorry, patent act. Then you have the copyright. So it is uh, in respect of the text database or artistic work appearing on the website of the Coca-Cola. So whatever is written in the form of writing, so that is covered under the copyright. So from one, this bottle, you can understand uh, that different uh, kind of intellectual property rights may be used for a single product. So a single product can be protected by more than one IPR. Uh, maybe uh, one IPR is for the uh, logo, one IPR is for the design, one of uh, IPR is for the content, which is ingredient, uh, mixture of the ingredient which is used to produce the coke. So one uh, ingredient may be used for uh, your website, the content which is available there that may be protected under the copyrights. So and let us see the various kind of uh, patents and examples. For example, this ceiling fan is there. The motor which is uh, inserted in the ceiling fan that is patented and that design these leaves of the fan and the, here the lighting is there that may be covered under the industrial design. Similarly, if you see your uh, uh, mobile phones, it's uh, circuits, it may be, it's a design may be patented. So for example, this uh, logo on the mobile phone is there, that is a trademark. Similarly, if you see there is a some kind of Kolapuri chappal, Kolapuri chappal is basically uh, aligned with the, the Kolapur. That's why it is covered under geographical indication. As I have already told you, the bottle of the Coca-Cola is covered under industrial design. The Coca-Cola uh, slogan is covered under trademark. The whatever is the content that is covered under trade secret, it may be uh, patented also. So various kind of options are available to get your rights protected under different laws. So these are the examples. So similarly, in the form of industrial design, it may be a design of a car, it may be a design of a chair, it may be a design of a shoes, it may be a design of a particular dress, or it may be a design of a particular bottle, or it may be a design of certain kind of particular ornaments. So these are all covered under the industrial design. So whatever kind of intellectual property you create, you may get it protected under various uh, provisions of the different laws. Similarly, these are the example of the trademark. For example, these are all uh, symbols and words and the combination of the symbols and words like Yahoo, like Adidas, like American Express, like BBC, BMW, Burger King, Walmart, CNN, UPS, Coca-Cola, FedEx, Google, Nokia, Honda, IBM, Toyota, all uh, or uh, McDonald, uh, Mercedes Benz, Pepsi. So these are etc. etc. These are all uh, combination of words and symbols are there, and these signify the quality of the products which are uh, used to produce uh, certain kind of things. And the customer identify uh, these products with these trademark. Whenever you go to shop, uh, 
purchase uh, the shoes of adidas you see this uh, uh, combination of words and symbols and after that you identify that it is original adidas or uh, uh, you go to burger king or you go to buy a, uh, any product of the hp computer so you see this logo hp invent or ibm to see that whether it is original product or not so these symbols uh, signify the quality of the products so it means these are registered under the trademarks similarly we have the copyrights so it may be including the literary work as i have already explained to you it may be artistic work it may be musical work so these are various things which are included in the copyrights then as far as the copyrights is concerned there are number of uh, things which are covered it so copyright is a legal term which basically which describe uh, rights given to the creators for their literary and artistic work the works which are created by copyright include literary works for example you may have written some novel you may have written some poems you may have written some plays you may have written some reference works which may have uh, you may have certain articles in the newspapers etc so similarly <clears throat> because as you are the students of the computer science you may have developed certain kind of computer programs and databases you may have produced certain films musical compositions dance and theatrical productions <clears throat> you may have produced certain kind of artistic work such as paintings drawings photographs and sculptures some architectural design may be there advertisement may be there maps technical drawings and manuals even so these are all the things which are covered under the copyright so if you have produced all these things or any one of them you may get it copyrighted under the provisions of the copyright act so <clears throat> similarly geographical indications so geographically indications are basically uh, these protect some kind of agricultural and natural or manufactured goods associated with uh, some kind of territory regional locality so geographical indications give protection to the group of people or association which are involved in the production of uh, product using traditional skills and knowledge because uh, the people who lives in the assam they are traditionally manufacturing the Uh, producing the assam leaves and then producing the assam tea from it similarly the case of darjeeling similarly if you go to the kashmir then you find that there is one kind of kashmiri shawl which can uh, the material for which can be available in the kashmir only not at any other place so you identify dhaka ki malmal so these are all the uh, products which are agricultural which may be natural or which may be manufactured jime for example kolapuri chappal etc so uh, th these are the manufactured things are there for example nagpur orange that is a agriculture product there which is natural climate is available at that place that that kind of thing is available so <clears throat> manufactured goods should all be may be pro produced may be processed or prepared in their territory so this gives a special quality the, to the product due to the geographical or clinical environment or maybe reputation of that area specific manufacturing or farming skill may be there some kind of other characteristics which are or basically attributed to that origin so it may consist of name of place of origin originate from different ge geographical territory for example when we say that agra ka petha or nagpur orange so these are the things which has certain kind of speciality to that place darjeeling tea or tirupati laddu or nagpur orange as i already explained so these are the examples of the geographical indications so examples of the geographical indications are there for example basmati rice is there darjeeling tea kanchipuram silk sari is there alfonso mango nagpur orange kolapuri chappal bikaneri bhujia agra petha so these are the examples of the geographical indications now question arises what is the purpose why we should protect the intellectual property why there should be a law of protecting the rights of the intellectual property so there are two main objectives of the economic objectives of the system of intellectual property protection first if uh, you don't protect the uh, the rights of the intellectual property of some persons who who are creator who are inventor then nobody will be encouraged to make investments in the knowledge creation nobody will be going for business kind of innovations nobody will be making some kind of research and development and the human being will not be at ease so therefore if you want that 
there should be some kind of investment if you want to promote investments in the knowledge creation if you want to promote investments in business innovation then you have to prepare or prepare a road map map of protection of the intellectual property rights by uh, protecting the rights of the inventors and creators through the various laws so this is the very basic purpose of first purpose of economic objective of uh, giving the protection to the intellectual property rights why we are in india are not very much developed because uh, our intellectual property laws are not very very strong we are at the loggerheads because of the non protection of the intellectual property right you must have seen a film is out in the cinema hall and immediately you find that their pirated cds are available in the market now a person who has spent 10 crore rupees in producing the one cinematography film and that film is available in one cd of rupees 10 or rupees 100 then how this 10 crore rupees will be covered in india many of our indian films which are produced which are very qualitative film sometime may not take off shoot in uh, the cinema hall because of the very very low protection given to the intellectual property rights in india pirated cds are available even our computer software a person who has developed the computer software now you see when you purchase the computer most of the people say that uh, kindly install uh, all the softwares into that but you don't purchase that software that is a violation of the intellectual property infringement of the intellectual property rights so that's why if you uh, our intellectual property laws are not strong nobody is going to promote investment in the knowledge creation and business innovation that's why in india we have a very very weak positions even sometime we have developed so many things but uh, their protection is taken over by somebody else because we are not in a position to get ourselves protected so it is very important our books are pirated you must have seen you go to any shop of the photo a uh, coffee shop you see that students are getting photocopies of from the book of a very renowned author you can't do it or sometime you see that a person who is photocopying he has made sets of the books photocopied it binded it up and students are original book is of 5000 rupees but the students are getting it from 500 rupees or the original book is 500 rupees you are getting it at rupees 50 so it means you are pirating all these things so if this kind of things will be there there will be no promotion of investments in knowledge creation and business innovation so it's very much necessary for, from the economic point of view to promote investments in the knowledge creation and business innovation we must protect the intellectual property second goal is to uh, promote widespread dissemination of new knowledge by encouraging and requiring rights holder to place their invention and ideas on the market so if i have developed something it's my right that my name should go to the public so that i must get new opportunities by my new creation if somebody else is getting the credit so th this is not going to work so sometime in uh, even the research field also in the field of commerce or in computer science or in basic sciences when you write a research paper the original work has been done by one person but he other person request them please include my name also this is also one kind of uh, uh, blackmailing or one kind of uh, things which is illegal so i think unless and until you have done something then it is your right to widespread dissemination of the new knowledge which is done by you which is created by you which uh, Uh, require right holders to place their inventions and ideas on the market so if you are not given this opportunity it mean i will be discouraged i will not produce so many things if our educational institution i have seen many educational institutions particularly in the field of management science or in the field of engineering the management of these institutions has given some kind of incentives if you pr produce your paper in some kind of uh, accredited journals then they will give you some money like 20000 rupees per paper 25000 rupees per paper but there is no such kind of encouragement in our educational institutions of arts and science and commerce colleges so i will appeal to all managements to encourage your staff by 
promoting the widespread dissemination of the new knowledge if uh, your student if your teacher has developed some kind of new thing give it total popularity of it you must have seen these days now that the school education department is giving widespread uh, publicity to the work done by the school teachers the programs organized by them why don't our educational institutions if a particular teacher particular teacher has uh, uh, written an article which is published in the leading newspaper why on that day all staff of members of that institution even the principal give widespread dissemination of this particular paper and give the wide recognition to that person this will encourage that person to do more things in the future also so, so this is a way which we should do but in india we don't have such kind of system that's why uh, our position is very weak though we have developed the two vaccines uh, of uh, corona virus that is uh, the efforts of the government of india with the help of certain labs and scientists so if some kind of encouragement if these kind of investments by the people by giving a strong protection of the intellectual property rights is given definitely it is going to work wonders and this will change the total landscape of uh, our country because in every field maybe in the field of social science maybe in the field of physical science there will be miracles new developments will take place and it, this will change the economic scenario of our country and uh, we will be the developed country very soon so these are the things which needs to be done in our country also so there are number of uh, uh, other uh, forms of protection being considered uh, along with the intellectual property rights for example traditional knowledge and folk folklore is there there are certain acts which protect the folklore and genetic resources also which are in the existing form so now let's come to the second part this was just a basic part where we discuss about what kind of intellectual properties are considered and how these are protected what kind of mechanism is available now in higher education universities and uh, colleges it is very important for them to basically move forward for research and development and uh, even university grants commission and national uh, assessment and accreditation council and even the hrd ministry regarding the, now the ministry of education uh, which uh, gives the right for national institutional ranking framework they have also said that every educational institution particularly higher education institution must have uh, their own intellectual property cell so that we can develop the intellectual properties institution wide if some teachers are there which are doing good work they must be encouraged through that cell their recognition is ensured then then seed money is given to them so universities and public research institutions are basically among the direct contributors towards innovation and research basically research originates from these institutions so the basic thing is as i have already said that uh, our focus in educational institution should not be only on uh, dissemination of the knowledge our focus should be creation of the new knowledge and creation of new knowledge will be done only through the innovation and research practices particularly in our kind of economies which are emerging economies like india so there is a potential to a pool of talent for innovation in uh, these uh, emerging economies in our colleges and this, uh, universities there is so much tail a uh, pool of tail talent is available which is very very innovative but the thing is you have to give them wings so that they can fly so largely from educational institution we can do uh, wonders so some people say that in colleges our purpose is not to do research our purpose is just to teach this is absolutely wrong notion if you are focusing in this it means now in the latest time or the emerging time you must see that the role of teacher is going to be limited if you are limiting your role only to disseminate the knowledge or whatever the knowledge is available just to provide to that to the your student then your role is going to be limited because university grants commission has already ta talked about it and given a guidelines that in future there will be a blended mode of teaching when blended mode of teaching will be there teacher role will be limited because for where wherever we require 10 teachers maybe we require one teacher only because recorded lectures will be available live lectures 
through internet or through video conferencing like zoom or other learning management system will be available and the teacher's role is going to be limited now how to improve the role of the teacher that is focus them involve them in the form of research and innovation so that they can create new kind of intellectual properties now though the blended mode of teaching is going to there but the kind of lectures the kind of virtual platform which is to be created the creativity in that platform the innovation in that platform the lectures innovative lectures which you have to produce that is to be produced by the teacher so now teacher has to be involved in the uh, research and innovation so that they can create the new kind of uh, intellectual property so it is very important in the higher educational institution to move towards that every higher educational institution must focus on all these areas now of late the significance of intellectual property rights in higher education has been widely recognized and uh, in india uh, the creation of national ipr policy which is approved by the union cabinet in may 2060 which was late first ever I ipr policy framed by the government of india has given the wings to that and uh, when we are talking up start up when uh, when we are talking up incubation center in the education institution or when we are uh, talking about atal tinkering yojana or atal new kind of uh, the some kind of labs which are created these are all offshoots of a, a national ipr policy which was approved in 2016 so i think uh, our educational institutions must not only restrict themselves for dissemination of the knowledge they immediately should focus on the creation of the knowledge how can we create the knowledge the creation of the video cds creation of the recorded lectures creation of the moocs these are the things which we must focus on and our teachers should be involved in it uh, mostly the people say that uh, uh, teaching in the college and university is very easy because we have to work from the 9 to 2 because we are saying that this is light because we don't understand the importance of being the teacher so importance of being the teacher is that we must involve at least 50% of the time you must stay in our educational institution from 9 to 5 and then produce the content which is required for our students which is a creation of the new knowledge only then you can justify uh, your teaching profession otherwise you are going to be fired very soon you must have read the national education policy which talks about that the colleges with the less than 3000 students will not be there in the landscape of higher education so if you want to survive then increase the strength of your educational institution of the students ask the students attract the students retain them in your educational institution otherwise you are going to be fired from this uh, uh, the landscape of higher education so if you will not do research if you will not create something new if you will not be involved in the creation of the new knowledge you are going to be fired from the educational institution the landscape which i am observing in future the because i am involved in the, now discussing the national education policy or uh, the blended mode of teaching we are covering so many programs listening to so many vice chancellor policies are being prepared you will not be there if you don't involve yourself in these kind of things so the primary focus of the uh, ipr policy which was created in the 2016 was promoting innovation and creativity especially among the entrepreneurs and in higher education institutions now our educational institutions are modeled to teach the students to just uh, attract to the red collar red collar jobs white collar jobs for example you are not encouraging them to become the entrepreneurs when such kind of uh, innovations and creativity will be promoted in the educational institution no student will be asked they will not be saying that we are going to get a service they say we will be job provider we will not be job seeker so if you want that your educational institution should uh, uh, provide Uh, create job creators not job seeker then you have to focus on promoting innovation and creativity through the production of intellectual property uh, properties in your institution so the policy brief specifically mentions synergy and synergizing of all forms of ipr concerning uh, statutes and agencies for tapping up the creative and innovation uh, energies in india and uh, you must have seen various organization has been created by the central government maybe for startups maybe for new kinds of ventures which attracts the new talent and promote uh, innovation and creativity same thing needs to be done 
at the educational institutions also. So there are a number of schemes of the University Grants Commission, which says that you have to create a research and development cell in your organization, IPF cell in your organization. Similarly, you have to uh, create an incubation center in your organization where creativity and innovation is developed among the students and you develop an entrepreneurship cell in your organization. So these are the things which I think uh, our educational institutions must do. Uh, even the University Grants Commission, the nodal authority for determining and maintaining the standards of the university education in India, issued a letter for inclusion of IPR as a generic elective subject under the choice-based credit system. Uh, the new education policy, our graduation system, which is going to be new education system, where there will not be any BCom, BA, BSc, or um, BCA, etc. Now there will be a three-year or four-year degree program where the students will not be restricted under watertight compartments to select the subject according to the choice of the institution, but choice will be there. If they want to study physics with the uh, music subject or physics with the accounting subject, they will be free to do it because the nomenclature of BA, BSc, BCom are going to be removed in the national education policy, new national education policy, which has been already been approved by the union cabinet and states are gearing to uh, provide it. So under the these uh, national education policy, UGC has uh, given the mandate to the universities so when you introduce choice-based credit system, uh, you must include a generic collective subject as IPR. So because unless and until there is awareness of uh, intellectual property rights and the laws which are available for protecting the intellectual property rights, you, you cannot uh, uh, make uh, more innovations and creativity. So similarly, as I have already talked to you, that national institutional ranking framework is there, uh, which also while uh, uh, evaluating the quality performance of the educational institution has uh, given uh, in their rank, they given some marks for uh, uh, intellectual property rights. So these ranking acts as a mechanism for institutions to include promoting innovation and research and development by giving assistance to the different stakeholder. So I have just uh, 100, if in NIRF, National Institutional Ranking Framework, we have 100 mark for research productivity, impact and IPR. So here 45 marks are given for combined metrics for publication, 45 marks are given for citations, uh, which are developed after your publication, then uh, intellectual property rights, 10 marks has been given. And similarly, it's uh, the outcome of the, the this has also been, been given certain kind of marks. So IPF, IPR has also been given status in the National Institutional Ranking Framework. So one of the parameters considered by ranking, which is significant for discussion, uh, is research and professional practice that include IPR and patents, both published by and granted by students and faculty members, which has a weightage of about 15 marks. So publication and patent application have been found to be highest for engineering and technical institution, but as far as the arts are concerned, commerce colleges are concerned, the ranking is low. So and the top ranking educational institution was found to be, uh, what is the impact of it? Uh, after creating these kind of uh, provisions in NIERF or NEC or in the UGC recommendations, it has been found that ranking of the top educational institution was found to be proportional to the number of applications filed for patents. There has been a significant increase in the application filed for patents and also research publication compared to the previous two years. So when uh, this IPR policy was uh, developed after 2016, there are a number of uh, manifold increase in the application for the patents and many fold increase in the publications, etc. So similarly in the NAC also, NAC uh, has one criteria out of the seven criteria, research consultancy and ex extensions for which the <coughs> due weightage is given. And uh, it uh, advised to all the organization uh, along with the creating the internal quality assurance cell, you must create the intellectual property rights cell in your organization. And uh, intellectual property rights is concerned with the protection of tangible and intangible properties. It has been recognized under the NAC also. And it provides rewards and recognition to the inventor contributor. So when you will uh, develop them, give them recognition to your teachers and students, you will be given more marks under the NAC also. So and this is a, 
the creation of the ipr cell in every organization because net has said it you must create the ipr in uh, your organization so even the ipr policy which was finalized in 2016 that also says that uh, to provide ecosystem which is conducive to the development of diverse varieties of research and innovation it is very much necessary that you must create uh, ipr cell in your organization maybe arts college maybe science commerce whatever kind of institution you have so the basic objective of ipr cell is to promote research and innovation within university framework uh, through a balanced ipr management program so to provide more freedom and autonomy for researchers for ip creation and management similarly to promote more collaboration between academy and industry when the ipr cell in your organization will be there four or five people will be sitting in your organization de deliberating among them and then uh, joining hands with the industries new miracles will be done so this is very important that every organization must create uh, uh, ipr cell in the organization so these are certain objective so if you want to have foster economic growth if you want that your economy should grow if you want that your students are not unemployed if you want that human life is eased intellectual properties must be protected intellectual property rights must be protected if you want that uh, incentive for technological innovation should be given intellectual property rights must be protected if you want that investment should be attracted in creating new jobs and opportunities you must protect the intellectual property rights this is the only way that you can uh, uh, ease the economic progress of your country so uh, this is all from my side because uh, i was just asked to uh, give a detailed presentation on uh, the basic of the intellectual property the intellectual property rights and uh, what is the need and uh, how can we develop our country with the model of protecting the intellectual property rights it is my humble advice to all organizations because uh, i am the regular uh, just a student of the national education policy and uh, discussing this on various forums and uh, secondly i am regularly discussing the blended mode of teaching the kind of environment in the higher educational institution as is going on the kind of environment is going to be created for the future we are going to have technological advanced system of higher education in india where the teachers role need to be redefined the uh, where the role of the educational institutions need to be redefined so if uh, uh, am i visible Uh, yes sir okay okay some disconnection was there so if you want that uh, your uh, stay is going to be there on the landscape of uh, higher education then uh, you must uh, develop accordingly because uh, there is a dire need to redefine the role of teachers in the educational institution we are going to have blended mode of education where student will have a choice we are going to have a new structure of degrees in our educational institution where a student will have a choice everything is going to be student centric till now whatever is going on in our educational institution that is the teacher centric teacher decide the timetable teacher set the tone for the class but in future student will set the tone for the class student will decide what to study where to study at what time to study because we are going to have a modular system where blended mode of teaching will be there so whenever the student will require he will attend your class which may be available on uh, moocs platform that is massive online open courses that that may be uh, through the recorded lectures or that may be through any other format so he is not going to be focused on you only because you have to uh, focus on the students also so therefore our role as a teacher is going to be changed we must work as a knowledge creator also while disseminating the knowledge in the present juncture thank you very much thank you very much sir you gave detailed knowledge about ipr to our participants you gave fruitful knowledge about how uh, we can use patent copyright trademarks 
सो आई होप आवर पेटेंट्स आवर पार्टिसिपेंट्स विल गेट गुड नॉलेज नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट आवर क्वेरी सेशन इफ एनी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैव एनी क्वेरी सो यू कैन टाइप इन चैट बॉक्स yes sir we have some query from the participant sides welcome welcome uh sir first is uh, what should be the criteria for patenting your work the criteria for patenting the work is already defined in the patent act you have to follow a certain procedure which is given given under the patent act uh first thing must be deemed that it must be a novel and obvious thing it must not have been created by somebody else in the right uh, in the past it should not be just uh, uh, manipulating certain things at the outer side and uh, uh, say that this is a new thing because it should be absolutely novel and obvious when you want to get it patented this is one thing secondly uh, that this the thing which you have developed must not be uh, hazard to any other person uh, must not be uh, putting any harm to the society if you have developed something which is going to ease the life of some person which is going to be noble which is a new thing uh, which was which is already not in existence you can get it patented for that purpose you have to follow a certain procedure for this purpose you have to fill an application uh, submit to the registrar along with the various documents according uh, along with the various designs or uh, other things which are required under the act then they will publicize your patent and ask for any kind of objection from the society that may be in the journal which is published by the under the patent act and after that if there is no objection absolutely Uh, you will be granted a patent after a due course of time if there are some certain objections then you will be asked to uh, reply to certain objections if the registrar is satisfied that you have rightly given all uh, inquiries uh, answered according to the objections then you will be get, given a patent otherwise your application will be put on hold or may be rejected or may be some other investigations may be required for that Uh, thank you sir next query is why do indian researcher prefer publishing research paper over filing patent application uh, why do indian uh, uh, researcher uh, prefer publishing research paper instead of uh, uh, filing in, patent in, instead of filing pat patent so uh, so when you consider your work to be patented it's a very very noble thing uh, that is very A, a very very i think a complicated process also and uh, that is very that is required to be uh, uh, tested at many places and from uh, go to from many many steps need to be followed for that when you say that most of the indian researchers focus on publishing the research paper rather than getting it uh, uh, the you your question is automatically replied because there may be certain non qualitative things into that so getting publish your research paper in india i i just not mention all these things to you is very very easy because i have interviewed so many people in various colleges for different post of teachers 99.99% has a plagiarism and even when we ask to the teachers what is the outcome of your research of different research paper they are not aware and sometime what is in the research paper they have written they are not clear about it they are not clear about the objective they are not clear about the research methodology they are not clear about the outcomes of the research they are not covered clear about the tools of the research which they have used so what to think of getting the patented out of it we are in the just in fancy stage particularly in the field of social sciences just okay. in fancy stage lot of work need to be done thank you sir next question is in which neck criteria preparations uh, they have mentioned about the ipr ah. so can you explain it sir 
uh, I think I it is a criteria number three. Uh, right, is, sir. Uh, criteria number three, which is regarding the research innovation, and I just uh, again uh, uh, go to that slide if it is available. research consultancy and ex extensions so this is the criteria research consultancy and extensions for which uh, marks are limited for the colleges but even though sufficient marks are there you can score well into that also and uh, gear up but uh, here new guidelines are there uh, the research will be counted only if it is in the care list if it is in the non care list your research papers will not be counted even for your NAC accreditation, that need to be seen. So whenever you are going to get your work published, so you must see that uh, only you publish your work in the care list at UGC journals. So next question is, what is the difference between trademarks application and radical innovation? Uh -huh. Trademark is basically used uh, in the form of words and symbols uh, which is put on the uh, your product or service it may be a service mark it may be a trade bar to signify that you uh, a person who is a who is producing a quality product has produced it and if that mark is there on such product or service it is a guarantee that uh, this is a qualitative product over the year, this, this is one kind of uh, goodwill, uh, which is uh, uh, developed uh, out of the use of these products by the various consumers and the reputation you have developed. If you see any mark on that product or service, you will be satisfied that, for example, if you want to see the Vardhman wool. So if Vardhman symbol is there, you will see that this wool is produced over the years people are using it, this is qualitative, this is a trademark. Or if a, if a one kind of service you are providing, that is a service mark. Now you are talking about radical changes, radical innovations. So when the radical innovation is there, that means you have transformed something and created a new thing. For example, earlier you was using uh, some kind of mobile where only buttons were there to uh, just dial any number. Now the new mobiles are coming where even you need not to dial your own voice to just speak the number, immediately the number will be dialed. That is called the radical innovation. If some company or mobile company develop this kind of, or even in future, there will not be a much gadget, only small thing will be there, which will be in your pocket. and. Uh, by the word of your mouth, you will be dialing it and you will be listening uh, the voice from your pocket only. There is no need to any kind of uh, uh, gadget in your hand. If such kind of things are developed so that that can uh, ease the weight of uh, your mobile phone, that is radical innovation. So something, creating something new. You may have seen now uh, the television sets which were very heavy earlier. Now LED televisions are there. Now only the curtain type televisions are coming, just you will lay down on the wall and everything will be managed. So that is called a radical innovation. If you design something new, which is a radical, which means earlier totally transforming the new things. Now your education system is changed. Earlier you was using your video conferencing was a very uh, charming thing for us that uh, when we talk about where something has talked on video conferencing, now everybody is talking through video conferencing daily. These are all radical innovations which are taking place. Even uh, now, I'm just looking about it, the Zoom platform which you are using. Earlier, uh, we were using this platform with minimum features. Now the features are there. You can have the virtual background. You have now new kind of things that virtual video is playing behind you and you are sitting, for example, I'm just, just sitting at my home, but you look at uh, this picture, it likes that I'm sitting in my college campus. So these are the certain kind of radical innovations which are coming in the services also. So this is the difference. 
between the okay. trademark trademark is just a symbol of uh, uh, that we have inherited with some kind of quality if some mark is put on it it is a guarantee that this product is of qualitative product so as far as the radical innovation is concerned radical innovation means something you have created which is absolutely new which is the transform that may be in the form of trade secret that may be in the form of patent or may be in the form of industrial design so as the case may be okay thank you sir uh, next question is why do generic dr uh, drugs are often low cost uh, than the branded drug generic drug are basically dekho uh, as far as the patents are any law of patent law is concerned sometimes because it is clause written there those it's your monopoly who has created it only that person can use this monopolistic uh, monopoly right to produce it but when the issue of health of the people is concerned then the government grant the uh, permission to other people also so that they can produce these drugs by using the generic formula of that particular drug because the when the big companies are using uh, producing it they have uh, so many other costs publicity costs advertisement costs managing the huge ventures their profit margins are very high but when the government allow all manufacture for example covid vaccine is there very soon generic covid vaccine will also be available because the two people who has produced uh, uh, this kind of vaccine they are charging very high initially they charge 150 only to government they give it to 150 then to the uh, public they give it 250 now they are going to charge 1000 or 1150 they are charging very high now the public pressure is there when the public pressure is there government may take decision ki hand over this formula to the all laboratories and produce this then i think at 50 rupees your uh, this magazine, uh, medicine will be available because the brand name is not there so as far as generic thing is there formula is same but it is produced at low cost because wherever everybody is allowed to produce it the material is available you can produce it so when the patent charges are not there government allows them to produce it so that's why the generic medicine cost the co medicine is same the formula is same brand name may be, may be different but because it is produced at low cost environment so there is no publicity charges so that's why they are uh, available at low cost thank you sir last question of uh, query of this session uh, is cryptocurrency is safe is cryptocurrency uh, safe sir it is not yet safe i would say that there is no uh, strict laws on it so it is just a uh, people are playing with it if you can take the risk it is safe for you if you are uh, risk prone it is safe for you but if you are not risk prone if you want your investments and money safe it is not safe okay sir thank you sir thank you very much sir you gave excellent session and very perfectly uh, you resolve all query from the participant sides thank you very much sir Uh, now i would like to invite our principal ma'am taranpreet warrior please ma'am kindly uh, for the vote of thanks kindly give vote of thanks ma'am <coughs> warm greetings to all those who are live on this session esteemed secretary managing committee shri vinod bhardwaj participants my dear colleagues students good afternoon to all of you as it is said all good things come to an end so about this webinar i am privileged to formally offer a vote of thanks on today's webinar i must admit that organizing such webinars are always very enriching and exciting generally for all of us first first of all i would like to offer my sincere thanks and gratitude to the resource person of today's webinar Dr. Ashwini Bhalla ji, Professor, Dean Academics Affairs, uh, SCT Government College, Ludhiana. Sir, we are really grateful to you for accepting our invitation in a very short span of time and sparing your valuable time for us in spite of your busy schedule. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the enlightening, uh, marvelous. I would say different. 
sharing different experiences of IPR in your deliberations. Your elaboration on, on IPR was thought provoking and fantabulous, sir. Your presentation, I would say it was an excellent one, structured one, as per my wish, the, the entire concept you delivered in a, uh, I would say a very uh, thought provoking way. Th uh, next, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank Shri Binod Bhardwaj for encouraging us with his direction, guidance, it would not have been possible to organize this kind of webinar without your valuable support, sir. Thank you very much. I would like to offer my sincere gratitude to IQAC coordinator also, Dr. Gauri. On this note, we would like to offer our sincere thanks to all the participants from different institutions, students for their presence, and uh, for, uh, uh, participants for your active uh, participation in making this session an interactive one. Your encouragement has motivated us. Sir, you have uh, rightly resolved all the queries and very patiently you have taken all these queries, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we, I take this opportunity to thank all the members of the organizing team, uh, especially Dr. Brahm Prakash, for taking the efforts in organizing this webinar with his wholehearted approach. A word of appreciation for Mr. Omkar Singh for the much needed media coverage that he has undertaken during all these webinars that this institution has organized. Thank you very much. Thank you participants. Thank you students for taking their time and joining us live in this session. So with these words, I would like to end this session. Stay safe, stay healthy. Stay connected. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, one important and uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, one important information for the participants we have sent feedback form in chat box kindly fill it and within one week we will provide certificate and so kindly don't left you and uh, don't leave your uh, no, whatsapp group so we will send a certificate in whatsapp group thank you very much